Ideas like that should never have come to these parts. Little else did other than what were brung by Boat Cross Fan. We went to church of course, but the guard now of the cross were too small for these flat lands. A stand stretch Fenland, look out cross flat water, cross endless skies and silence, was to feel the slow guard. But en men brung you fares at em, a sin and witcraft. Whisper began spread like wind through reeds, heads bending together in one direction and then another, all crowding round the sink and pool of that one word, which. I had always been Elena. No one need call me Elena the healer, for everyone knew who I was and what I did. But the wind changes direction, rise the bat and new ideas, and I became Elena the witch. I don't know who were to blame. How can you pick amongst the crowd of reeds the single star and say, Yo will the one who been first. It seemed the old village had come out a watch. I can't remember their faces, though I knew them all. Only remember the fear on them, though I was so afeared. And the strangest thing was, I'd seen those faces in fear afore. Mutters in labour, sheened in sweat and pain. Gleaming in the firelight are early morning baths. But that day, I were no longer the one at ease their fears, but the one they were afeard of. Though I'm not even sure if that's true, I think they were more afeard of themselves and what they were doing. As the men tied me a rocks, an eerie silence fell, like out on the fence when the wind drops and the reeds start moving. I knew the girl who tied my thumb and my toe. I can't remember who she is anymore, but I knew I helped her in some way, set a boon, brung a child into the world, calm a fever, and then rough hands who I ailed in their pain and grief. Push me into the pool of water. The knot and I with ease. And I remembered the pity on her face. And realised she tied it loose. A loss out of kindness. Once freed, I started to float at the surface. But the rocks that held me were heavy. And sank in the mud. And I was suspended as if flying. As if in midair. There was a time of complete stillness under the water as I was holding my breath, such as I felt when a woman in labour rests between pains holding my hand, or the stillness of the deathbed when breath and life unwind their threads, unravelling into a huge silence that fills the room. I must have been floating near the surface because I could see raindrops falling on the water, circles rolling outward with every drop, and I thought, how different it looked from under here, how beautiful. It did not feel strange to me being here, less strange than being stood on that bank with all those blank familiar faces. I felt so calm, perhaps if I open my mouth, I'll be able to breathe. But when I did, water poured in like fire and with it terrible fear and pain. Fish and reeds and rain disappeared as bubbles from my screaming mouth clouded my vision. And then there were nothing. I wish they'd left me there. Dis suspended in the water, that would have been fitting. The river reed woman, I would have sloughed off my skin, grown a new one with scales, so that every way of turn, it would have caught, like thumbnails of silver jewellery shimmering. I would have grown gills around my neck so I could breathe. My hair would have grown green with weeds, my tongue a bed of black peat. But they didn't leave me there, having decided I died a Christian death. They took me out of church, 
buried me in consecrated ground, having decided my soul were not the devil after all. Everyone was there, and they were angry. Women who I put my hands inside, who let me touch them in trust in a way they not even let their husbands. Fathers whose daughters I'd saved, all stood there with pinched mouths and fairest eyes. The only ones still scared the priests at the front, whose hands and voice shut under their hard glare. No one else would try for witchcraft in the village out of there. And I too am angry, not at them, but the little words of their little god that made them turn from their nettled rust affair. Give me the truth of the fence, the slow natural order of rain and grain, the silence of the deathbed, my oiled hands inside a woman at ease her pain. There is only one truth. The wind blows the reeds in only one direction, and I will cut down with my bare hands any reed that raises his head above the rest, and say he know best which way all should bend.